get onto you shaking your almond trees yeah, or this thing. Yeah, but back in the early days when I was down the Billabonga, this is your shaker. Um, a bit prim primitive, but back then anything will do. Yeah. Anything will do. And the old principle is that the tree is sp spread out evenly. That's why the and limbs are so, everything's so low in the tree, like the limbs start right, the, real low, don't they? The, the, the limbs are trained to come from a lower yeah. position in, in the trunk. Not designed for an arm and shaker by any means. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and the, but it does allow you with the, with the mallet to come and hit the tree in, in such a motion. And in some growers, like John Parkinson, taught me how to get inside the tree. You'd be standing in the middle of the tree, knocking each limb. And unless you were perfect with your balance, you're going to be in strong. Oh, yeah. So how old were you when you did that? Would have been 40? I would, would, would have been about that. Yeah. 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 So that's about my a, age now. A, a lot younger than what I am today. Yeah. You know? yeah. And a bit, bit more vigour. Well, I'm 40 and I'm not, I wouldn't have accepted <laughs> that, I don't think. So. No. <laughs> but, uh, and then both, and then you would uh, run your tarps out, wouldn't you? You'd have your trailer, park your trailer next to the tree, run yes. your, roll your tarps out before you start knocking the Knocking the nuts that, off. That's right. You'd, you'd knock all your tr uh, the limbs that you can, and get as much as you can off yeah. the tree. You'd come around with big long bamboos to and get knock the rest of them off. Yeah. At the top. And then once you, you finish that, you uh, drag the little... canvases up into what we call a boat, which is theoretically is just a a, a uh, twenty foot long trailer, and the, the uh, the hessian sheets were attached to, to this long trailer and uh, you you pull, pull them up like a fishing and tip them yeah. in, into the into the boat and that itself as, as patrick just said it's a, like a fishing net when it's loaded up you pick it up and let this the, the, the produce run, run in, into the, the, the into the trailer yeah then you take the trailer back to a drying area. Concrete preferably. Preferably per, per concrete, yeah. yes. And this is the way you spread them out and allow them to dry. And then you scoop them up and put them in the shed and uh, have it more. Oh, with a shovel. Coming in oh, with a shovel. Yeah. Yep. And uh, that was very hard work. Fortunately, mechanisation came to the rescue. Yeah. And it was a lifesaver, believe me. Um, we, uh, and Andrew, uh, Adrian had uh, started purchasing uh, uh, harvesters, uh, which picked, picked and, and a sweeper, which swept the fruit from under the trees and put him into a row where you'd come along with a, a pickup, which is like a uh, 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 vacuum cleaner basically. Ca ca council. Yeah. Uh, uh, sweeper. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, what you're saying is road, road, road sweeper. sweeper. Pick, pick them up. And of course, you'd get rid of 90% of the sand, uh, fairly good 98% of the leaves, and all you've got left is, 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 is the fruit. Uh, but if we got to the stage that, that then that we were able to leave them on the ground a little bit longer because we had sprinkler irrigation and this tended to um, have the surface dry it a lot quicker. Uh, we were able to allow them to stay on on the ground a bit longer so as uh, that they would meet the, the almond co-op's uh, moisture content of no more than 5%. Mm. We well, achieved, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we yeah. achieved that and uh, we could then dump them into the shed without any fear of uh, moisture. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you won't mould, you won't get any mould or... Get, get, get any mould yeah. or uh, eternal combustion. Because mm. if there's too much moisture there, that's a possibility. Mm. And this is the last patch that we've got here with sprinklers. That's, so, that's right, yep. So, um, under tree sprinklers. Would you is. believe the sprinklers that themselves have, have got to be well into the, well, the th 30s and 40s. We've reconditioned them how many times? Two or three times, yeah. so. <laughs> quite a few times. Yeah. I think there's more spare parts there than what 
sector is of the original sprinkler. Yeah, yeah. But they do a good job. Mm. I've only just started buying new sprinklers just to replace them, just I, to I, I suppose, yeah. keep the things yep. going. So, but yeah, the, it's but unreal how long they've lasted. So That's right. But this is where your drip system comes to the fore. Uh, a lot of the surface area uh, d does not get moisture and therefore it helps to dry out the fruit when, when it's become harvest. Uh, and you so can keep irrigating, basically. And you can still keep we, irrigating. You don't stop irrigating. Even, even when you're picking. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. 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 yeah, just get them off the drip line as soon as you can. And yeah, that's right. Yeah. Put the conditioner through them, let yeah. them dry out on the on the ground in the windrows and um, yeah, pick them up a day or two later. So yeah, yeah. it's um, life is a lot easier with drip irrigation systems. So yeah, so it's uh, definitely a, a, the way, the technology, the way of the future, I think. So one of the latest, uh, 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 developments was the uh, soil moisture monitors. Yes. To me that was a major advance and that you got something that would tell you how much moisture you've got down there. Mm. So there's the no, no point you might over irrigate and don't under irrigate. You can, that's right, you keep your over and under irrigation within set parameters mm. which is ideal for the tree. Yep, that's and right. Th that's the name of the game. You get, we've got to treat the tree uh, as if it's if it's human. You've got to feed it when it's when it's hungry. You give it a drink when it's thirsty, and you uh, you knock it into shape when it gets out of line. <laughs> that's right. That's harvest time. That's so. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in harvesting, it does a bit. Uh, yeah. But you well, must. Well, it gets the dead wood out of the trees, doesn't it? You must prune. You must yeah. prune. Well, yeah, prune the harvest time. Shake all the dead branches out, <laughs> yeah, especially sure. these old ones. Anyway, yeah, the young yeah. ones aren't so bad. So yeah. Yeah. you almost need to have one. If you don't hit it right, yeah. what happens? Uh, Actually, that is a good quality almond. It's good size yeah. compared to that one. An ideal. It, it is a bit on the on the premature side. Yeah, but. Uh, we get more of that, which we are. Yeah, majority of that this year is really good sizing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.